Hey guys, it's Destiny, and we recently got revealed that Topaz and her adorable trotter Numbi is guaranteed to come for the second phase of 1.4. Yesterday, I made a video about Jing Liu, so today we're going to be talking about Topaz and Numbi. I thought I'd go over what we know about her kit, possible team partners and concepts, and also what I think about Topaz's future-proof value when it comes to what she does. If you guys enjoy videos like these, make sure to subscribe, and I also heard if you leave a like on the video, it'll increase your gotcha luck by 20% for your next banner. Now though, let's get into the video. To begin, let's go over what we currently know about Topaz's kit. Topaz will be a Fire Hunt class character who has a pretty interesting kit that can offer supportive and also offensive traits, and it's all with the help of her trusty partner, Numbi. Some fire characters we currently have take advantage of Burn, which is Himiko, Hook, even Gwenaifen, who will be on Topaz's banner. But Topaz takes a very different approach in comparison to our current fire characters with being a follow-up attack central character. At the start of an ally turn, if no enemies are inflicted with proof of debt, then Topaz will inflict it onto an enemy. For clarification purposes, proof of debt is a debuff that, from what it looks like, is not removable, so the enemy can't get rid of this. This will also increase the follow-up damage that an enemy receives, and Numbi will specifically target this enemy. Topaz is part of the Hunt class, so as a result, she primarily focuses, of course, on single target damage. Numbi will also be considered a follow-up attack, so this is very important to keep in mind, and Topaz will be able to buff her own damage capabilities because of this, but also teammates follow up attack damage with this. This is really important and it'll be a really important part for majority of this video. Numbi acts on their own though, so they have their own initial speed, but whenever an ally hits an enemy inflicted with proof of debt, Numbi's turn will be advanced forward, which can lead to really nice combinations for possible team partners and rotations as well. Let's say though you want a different enemy to be inflicted with proof of debt. Let's say it went on to a minion, you're not really a fan of that. Topaz's skill can actually redirect who has proof of debt. And for what it seems, only one person at a time of course can have proof of debt because that's who will be targeted by Numbi. So your skill will allow you to redirect it and as a result you can pick which enemy will receive the additional follow-up damage so as a result there's kind of flexible options with that of course though it's very likely that we'll just want it primarily on the big enemy on the field to make things even spicier topaz's ultimate gives numbi an awesome looking power up i mean look at this power up it's so cool this will increase numbi's crit damage and damage overall which makes numbi's damage capabilities technically also topaz's even stronger. Plus, Numbi will also be advanced forward whenever an ally hits an enemy with proof of debt with a basic attack, skill, or ultimate, which makes Numbi honestly go to town on the enemy. I notice it looks like this has two stacks, so it very likely will mean that Numbi will be able to take advantage of these super follow-up attacks, I like to call them that, after Topaz uses her ultimate, for once again up to those two times. The best part about Topaz's kit though is that she's literally a treasure glitch in Honkai Star L <laughs> because Numbi will help you find treasure and other trotters on the map with Topaz's technique because Numbi literally gets summoned in the map beside Topaz for this and it's absolutely adorable and one of the cutest things ever. If Topaz also attacks an enemy with Numbi beside her, Numbi will also regenerate energy which looks like a really good amount for Topaz as well. Overall, Topaz, from the looks of her base kit, has an awesome kit where she can help the team deal more damage, where she can increase follow-up damage, and also increase her own damage and utility by quite a lot with her self-buffing capabilities. Now though, let's go over team ideas and concepts from what we know so far. As for concepts, since Topaz will be able to increase the follow-up damage taken by an enemy, a lot of characters benefit from this. Jingyu Win, Himiko, Herta, Clara, Kafka's follow-up attacks, Blade, and so much more. I thought I'd make team comp examples and explain how it could possibly go just based on the basics of Topaz. For a Jingyu Win team, you can use a team comp like Ting Yun to of course buff Jingyu Win's damage. As we know, Ting Yun and Jingyu Win, really good pair. Topaz though will be used as another DPS on the team who will support Jingyu Win as well. What this means in this case, Topaz will do her own damage, but since you inflict proof of debt with Topaz, this will allow Jing Yuin to do more damage because the Lightning Lord now, once it is the Lightning Lord's turn, will be able to dish out more damage depending on the multiplier, of course, of proof of debt. You can also pair, of course, Jing Yuin with another sustain, which if you have Fushuin, 
I'd ideally go for her because she provides the crit rate for the team, which can benefit Jingyuan and Topaz as well. But if you don't have Fushuin, then any built sustain should be okay. Most of these team comps I will be mentioning real quick are really similar, but as for Himiko or Herta, since they have their own requirements for inflicting follow-up attacks, you can use them as a secondary DPS possibly alongside Topaz. Just ultimately depends on what you can do, but the rest of the team can also buff the team and also sustain. When it comes to Clara, I would personally recommend Clara, Lynx, or Loja for sustain, but March 7th can be good as well for the shields if you do want that as well. An additional likelihood of being hit or Clara. Topaz also will once again increase the follow-up damage and also increase her own damage and then you have a buffer or a debuffer. Clara will also go to town on the enemy that does have increased follow-up damage taken. Lastly for Blade, similar concept as the Clara team. Blade with either low jar links, Topaz, and then a buffer or debuffer. For those who do not have many options though, I will highly recommend Gwenaifen as an option. Gwenaifen is able to inflict a debuff on enemies which is stackable and it also increases the damage enemies take based on the live stream, which all the teams I've mentioned can likely take advantage of this. So she could be a great option as well for team comps if you do not have a buffer or debuffer fully built or really stacked out. Gwenaifen could be a good option, plus she is also on the banner. The last thing I wanted to talk about is Topaz's feature value when it comes to Honkai Star Rail. Personally, I think Topaz is a pretty universal character as she could be used with characters to buff up their follow-up damage, but she can also work on teams that don't necessarily involve a bunch of follow-up attacks due to how her ultimate operates. But of course, having at least one character that has follow-up attacks will be nice from what I'm personally thinking. I do like the idea of a character who's able to support other teammates though, and also be able to do their own damage as well through their kit, since it can allow them to be used on a lot of team comps in my personal opinion. As we continue to get more characters who have a sort of follow-up in their kit, I'm sure Topaz's value will continue to increase quite a lot as time goes on. And even now, her value based on her kit so far looks really promising. So I have really high hopes for this character being awesome for a very long time due to what she does. Plus, if you like her design, that's even more reason to go for Topaz and Numbi. I feel like the only main reason you will want to pass on Topaz is if you don't really like the design or play style or the follow-up attacks and what she does. Or also if you are saving for someone else. If you do decide to go for Jingliu or Zila, then you may not have the pulls to ensure Topaz. So that may be the case where you have to skip her. Of course though, once we know more information on her, I'll discuss her, especially near her release for final analysis thoughts. But for my initial thoughts, she's looking really good. Let me know in the comments down below though what you guys are thinking about Topaz and Numbi, her value overall, and if you're going to pull for her or if you're going for a different character. I hope you all enjoyed this video as I enjoyed sharing my thoughts with you guys. And if you guys want to see more content from me, make sure to subscribe and also leave a like to support the video. And I hope all of you have a great one like always. Peace.